I'm here with Terry Walls, a doctor who has had a secondary progressive MS and was in bad shape, but through a diet and lifestyle has not only changed her life, but changed the lives of countless other people out here. I'm honored to have her here in this space and we're gonna chop it up about all things MS right now. Dr. Walls, author, a, you know, multiple sclerosis person who was in one spot and is now in another spot. Like you just keep hanging these accolades on us right now. It's it's wonderful that you're here in this space. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Look, it's it's fantastic to have you here because um, to me, you are an example of having everything given to you, sort of like the diagnosis and the prognosis, and you know, it's none too good. But within yourself, you say, you know what, I'm going to have a different outcome. I don't know what it's going to look like, but I believe something else can happen here. Um, and that's why it, it, what you have uh, brought out into the world is a fantastic thing, because it, at, the, at the root of it, it's self-belief. There is so much that is under our control. So much. <sighs> right. And the... Um, idea that diet or exercise can like help your MS and sort of improve your symptoms is lost on a lot of folk because they're hurting and because it's not so simple and because it, um, it requires- It takes work. It, it's effort, it's work. Yeah. So um, it's just the work that you're doing, man. Appreciate you, thank you. <laughs> well, we're changing the world. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I'm so grateful uh, to have gotten my life back because right. as you say, you know, I, I was so weak. I could not sit up in a regular chair. Um, and I also have tried general neurology, uh, which have been getting relentlessly worse for 27 years. Mm. Uh, and so, you know, my, my big fear, uh, cause I, um, I had come to terms with, you know, I, I, it's difficult to sit up. Um, I, I, I re, configured my office. I have zero gravity chairs at work, at home. I'm beginning to have brain fog. My trigeminal neuralgia is steadily more severe, more difficult when it turns on. Um, you know, light, sound, touch, even a breeze on my face triggers the pain. I can't speak. I can't talk uh, because swallowing triggers the pain. Talking triggers the pain. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm taking high dose steroids. Uh, injections at the pain clinic. Uh, and so I had come to terms with, I'm probably going to be bedridden by my disease. Mm. I may well become demented by my disease. My, my, my deep worst fear was the pain would turn on uh, and would not get, be able to get turned off. Mm. You know, so, so, you know, in 2007, um, I'm making frequent trips uh, to the pain clinic for injections. When the pain turns on, I'm going to the pain clinic for injections. I'm taking solumedrol. Uh, it now takes five days of uh, a gram of solumedrol uh, in daily injections to stop my pain. That's a lot. That's a lot that you're a lot. doing right there. That <laughs> is a lot. You know, and I've seen multiple uh, pain centers around the country. Uh, and, and so that was what I was facing. Right. Uh, and it, I had already been reading the basic science, experimenting on myself based on everything that I was learning. I was using vitamins and supplements. I had adopted the paleo diet. Uh, and uh, I had slowed my decline. And I'm so grateful I had slowed my decline, but you know, I, was cl I was clearly still declining. My pain was clearly still getting worse. Uh, and that's, you know, when I discovered electrical stimulation of muscles, um, I started that uh, uh, very intensive rehab uh, with a physical therapist that was uh, a treated athletes. Mm. And, you know, uh, I, I don't know if, you know, before I became a physician, I uh, did Taekwondo uh, and I competed nationally. What, you can put people on the floor, Dr. Walls? What happened? <laughs> <laughs> I, I knocked, you know, I, I knocked a lot of people on, on the floor and my, my uh, uh, coach 
uh, you know, saw that I was really pretty good at this. So he would have me fight two men who were taller than me at a time in preparation for my uh, competitions. That's right. So I, I was a, uh, I sort of joking, yeah, I was a kick-ass sort of girl. <laughs> no, that, that's, that's good. There's something that I'm like, there's this, again, it's the self-possession to know that, yeah, you're in a world of hurt. Yeah, it's not looking like it's going to get better. However, you do feel that something inside of you in your gut is the right next step to take. And then you take that next step. Like, just, just speak, That's right. speak about that. You, you keep doing all that you can. And so yeah, at that point, you know, I've got uh, children. Uh, and Two kids. Two kids, uh, Zach and Zeb. And they are watching what I do every day. Like, okay. I had thought I was going to teach them martial arts. I had thought mm. I was going to do mountaineering with them. I had thought I was going to do kayaking and mm. wilderness exploring with them. But all that was taken away very quickly for me. Mm. But I, I could still model that you do everything that you can. Uh, in my case, I was doing my workouts. I was reading the basic science. I was adding you know, various vitamins and supplements. Right. I had adopted the paleo diet. Uh, and, and then you know, I discovered E-STEM. So now I'm doing E-STEM every day. Uh, I'm still doing my little tiny workouts because you know, I'm so weak. My workouts are, are, are really little, but yeah. I do them every day. Every day. Before I go to work. That's right. And I, I had to be very careful about how much I could work out so I could still go to work. Yep. But <laughs> I never missed a day. And I came home from uh, uh, work. I'm, I'm tired. I still do, I would do my little ESIM, my little workout again. And then I had this really brilliant aha moment. It's like, what if I redesigned my paleo diet based on, on the science I was reading, all these important nutrients, where are they in the food supply? Mm. So now, instead of focusing on what not to eat, I'm focusing on what to eat. Mm. Mm. And yeah, I, 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 uh, I discovered the Institute for Functional Medicine. I took their course on neuroprotection, protection, further refined what it was that I was focusing my nutrition on. And you know, it was December 26th, 2007, that mm. I was like, okay. I, I, I finally worked out, these are the foods that we're gonna stress. I'd already you know, taken some things out uh, and I had been assigned to a new job by my boss who was probably trying to force me into medical retirement. Mm -hmm. So I was gonna be in the traumatic brain injury clinic, seeing patients without resonance. So now I'm gonna to have to get out of my wheelchair, do his exams, get, you know, get, get back in. All physically, stuff. I knew like this was not a job that physically I could do. Um, and I'd been told it's gonna to have to you know, take on this new responsibility in January. Uh, and so January rolls around and I've been doing the, my intensive nutrition for about three weeks uh, when this starts. And that first week, you know, I, I, I'm just watching what, what people are doing. So it's an observation week, like, you know, hell, I should be able to do that. I'm in my wheelchair. I'm just watching, uh, and, you know, and that's okay. So now the next week comes along uh, and it's time for me to start doing the exams. And now I've been four weeks into this intensive way of eating. I've been doing my E-STEM uh, actually for about three months. Hmm. Yeah, that first day was not too bad. Hmm. And I'm like, okay, well, that was sort of interesting. And the next day was not too bad. And at the end of the week, I'm like, I can do this. You know, and then I'm like, you know, my pain is not as bad. Hmm. This, this is, it, it's amazing that you're touching on this in this way, because there's a couple of things. MS is a game of inches or gaining your wellness back when you have MS is a game of inches and yes. you're seeing all the way down the field and you just want to be in the end zone to get that touchdown. But right now you are on this two mile, line, uh, sorry, the two yard line. So or maybe gonna, the one foot line, or maybe the, <laughs> we're not even out for our yards. Exactly. And you just keep incrementally doing all that you can. Little by little. And that is a real tough pill to swallow. Uh, no pun intended, but it's one of the and most important things. What I want your, your uh, listeners to understand was I started doing all this stuff 
uh, just to show my kids that, yep, life's not fair, but you do the best you can anyway. And when I was doing all of this stuff, I had been told for years, you know, Terry, you now have secondary progressive MS, functions once lost, you're going to be gone forever. Mm-hmm. Do all that you can to keep what you've got mm. as long as possible. So yeah. I was doing my E-STEM, I was doing my supplements, I'm doing my uh, very careful, precise nutrition, not to get better, because I knew I couldn't get better because I had progressive MS. I was doing all this to keep the limited function that I had as long as I could. And then to my surprise, you know, my pain is less, my energy is better. And then I realized, you know, my, my, you know, I have less brain fog, my thinking's yeah. uh, clearly improving. Uh, and then I, I realized that this new role I'm supposed to do, uh, 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 the traumatic brain injury clinic, which I, I had been so depressed, like, oh, you know, I'm finally gonna have to stop being a physician because the clinic I was assigned to was going to be more physically demanding. And then like, wait a minute, this is working out. Mm. Mm. Uh, and you know, at the end of the week, I'm like, no, I think I can do this. At the end of the next week, you know, clearly I can do this. And the end of the first month I was like, yes, yeah, this is, yeah. This, this is okay. Now what, what is, if you have to put your mind back to where I was at, I had completely understood every physician I'd ever seen in neurology it said secondary progressive MS, the goal is to stop further loss. That was the whole goal, to stop further loss. That's it. And if we can do that, that's a home run, Terry. Because you know, MS, particularly progressive MS is a progressive disease where you, know, you end up in a, uh, and it was very clear, my trajectory was bedridden, demented, intractable pain. That's what the previous 27 years was telling me. Mm. Mm. So I, I, my, so my pain is, is gone. My mental clarity's improved. My energy's improved. Uh, and that in t- really intensive rehab I'm doing with this wonderful, wonderful physical therapist who is treating me like an athlete. Cause I, I convinced him like, like, I, you know, by God, I am an athlete. Cause you, you know, are- I competed in nationally in full contact Taekwondo. I, you know, I will work out. Uh, pain is not a problem. I will do this stuff. Mm. And so he was very, you know, I saw him three times a week uh, for two years. Mm. And we mm. very gradually, progressively kept increasing what I could do. That's 104 and, weeks, Dr. Walls. You did that. You know, <laughs> and, and, and w- w- the thing that's remarkable is, so I'm, I'm getting stronger, but I had understood stood because of progressive MS, part of what you do uh, as, as a normal com- compensatory strategy is I let go of the future. I'm like, okay, I'll just take each day as it unfolds. My commitment is I'm going to do all that I can every day just to stop the decline. So here I am. I, I, I've accepted that, you know, I, I don't know what my future is, but I'll just take each day as it's as it unfolds, Mm -hmm. my pain is gone, mental clarity is gone. I'm now walking without a cane around the hospital. Go ahead now, okay. Uh, And um, uh, there's actually a really cute story. I I had to go see my University of Iowa uh, uh, chief of medicine. You do that every two years. Right. And, and, you know, that's going to be a pretty far walk from the VA hospital. So uh, down a hill, up another hill. And I thought, you know, that's really too far. So uh, um, I, by that time, I'd swapped out my wheelchair, a little scooter in my office. Uh, and I thought, well, I'll just, I'll just take the scooter over. And, uh, um, uh, but I had, hadn't been in it for a couple months. The battery had, had worn down, so I, I'm going over the ba- my scooter dies. I end up, you know, disengaging the pin. I push it up the hill, leave it at the hospital uh, entrance, uh, and and continue my way to the uh, office. 
I'm late. I get chewed out for being late by the secretaries. So they go in, I Lovely. apologize to my chair. He goes, oh, oh, so your your scooter died and you had to wait for the patient mobilis. Well, though, actually, I, I uh, Dr. Rothman, I pushed it up the hill and then I continued over, but you know, I'm a little slow. And he goes, you pushed your scooter up the hill? So, um, <laughs> and he hadn't seen me in years. So he, he wasn't realizing that I was walking around. Mm. So I show him mm. my uh, e-stem device. We talk about my protocol. Uh, and he says, you know, this is the most miraculous thing that, that I, I, has happened, Terry. Um, so he directed me to write a, get a case report written about my recovery mm. because it was so remarkable that I had improved. Uh, and then when we did that, he was instrumental in my a research protocol thing mm. and, and really redirecting my uh, research life to doing clinical trials, mm. investigating diet and lifestyle. Mm. Uh, originally in progressive MS, uh, could people do this? And then we uh, branched over to relapse and remitting MS. Uh, I've done four trials, you know, progressively bigger trials. Uh, yeah, and now uh, we've got a fifth trial going on. Uh, I've got a couple grant proposals for the sixth trial. Okay, okay. Uh, and so, what? I should I, I should tell you about that first bike ride. Please do. Like, look, I'm 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 here along for the ride because because again, okay. you're 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 the so the beacon, so to speak. So you know, I, I uh, it's now the spring of 2008. I've been walking around. Um, and of course, you have to get into my head. I don't know what this means. Mm. And I remember right. I let go of the future. I'm just taking each day as it unfolds. Uh, and I have no judgment, no opinion about what this means. Mm. Mm. I, um, and uh, spring is coming along. Uh, I, I'm walking around the block, little short walks. They're probably about a half mile uh, with my wife, Jackie. And I say, Honey, do you think I could uh, ride, try riding my bike? Mm. And she says, well, if things keep going well, we'll try in the fall. Mm. Okay. Uh, two weeks pass. And it's a beautiful spring day. It's Mother's Day. Uh, and I go to the garage. I, I, I've decided that I'm going to ride my bike. So I'm in the garage. Uh, my, my son's been riding my bike. Uh, and he's six foot five, by the way. So I have to you know, bring my seat down. I've got my helmet on. My family discovers me in the garage. We had this emergency family meeting. <laughs> my kids are afraid. They don't want me to you know, fall and get hurt. Right. But my wife, Jack, uh, says, OK, let's try. So we take my bike to the curb. I, you know, uh, I get on my bike, one foot on the, on, on the curb. My, she says to, uh, to Zach, my son, you jog along on the left. Zach, you jog on the right. To catch her if she mm -hmm. falls mm -hmm. uh, and we wait for the all clear uh and jack yeah jack yeah. says try yeah it's, it's, it's fine to try yeah. and I, I push off the bike wobbles but i catch my balance and i bike it <laughs> you know it's, it's zach zach's crying <sighs> zeb's crying jackie's crying and I cried. Yeah. And it feels so miraculous. At oh, that God. moment, I understand that the current understanding of progressive MS is incomplete. Mm. That who knows how much mm. recovery mm. might be possible. Mm. That's the moment when, when I take my future back. You know, it's um, there's you got to give that room and you got to give that space, uh, <sighs> Dr. Walls. Thank you, um, because you see, my my thing is triggered because <laughs> I have my own version of the wait. Not only can I do this, I have incredible support from everyone around me, my family. This is going to be like something unlike anything I have ever done and anything unlike people are saying is possible. That is unimportant. This is what I'm going to do. I am getting what more well. And that's, that's beautiful. <laughs>
Absolutely. And, and that's when I really understood it is possible that, that the current understanding is incomplete. Mm. My role is very simple. You keep doing the best that you can every day and understand that no one knows how much recovery is possible. At all. I, I think that's uh, even how we can even vibe here. Like I'm a guy who does uh, what I can for the day. I have a um, sort of uh, the goal in mind, but it's like, no, what's important is right here, right now, getting down the street, eating the, the X amount of cups of vegetables a day, like doing the things that I can control no matter how large or how small they are Absolutely. just to get me to a different spot. We're just going to keep forward with the things under my control. Um, so, you know, I'm paid a very intense intention uh, to my eating, uh, to my rehab program. Mm. Um, uh, and of course, as I recover and I learn more, I, I, I keep doing more nuance uh, to my self-care routine. Mm. Uh, and, you know, in that particular journey, so in, in eight, uh, Mother's Day, I pedal around the block, we're all crying. Uh, and then, you know, I, I'm now biking every day, uh, then twice a day, uh, and uh, gradually longer. Then in October, Jack says, you know, honey, there, there's a courage ride. Uh, it's 18.5 miles. Let's sign you up. Uh, and so uh, uh, that's a couple more weeks. Uh, and, and the furthest I, I can bike uh, that day is, uh, before that day is eight miles. Uh, mm -hmm. And so I have to take several several breaks, mm -hmm. uh, about every five miles, I'll lay down, take a break, mm -hmm. and, and we make it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. once again, you know, as I cross the finish line, you know, my family's crying, I'm crying, uh, and I've just biked 18.5 miles. Wow. Wow. Uh, and, you know, by then, how I'm thinking about disease and health is really transformed. Mm -hmm. The way I practice medicine in my primary care clinic is transformed. I'm talking more you're, and more. You're a functional vets. medicine doctor now. I'm a functional medicine doc. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're teaching my, my vets, my crusty vets, you know, uh, to get fired up about vid, uh, vegetables and liver. Mm. Uh, and Organ meats, baby. They, 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 <laughs> they transform their lives. Their blood pressures improve, their blood sugars improve, their pain reduces. Uh, uh, the traumatic brain injury clinic. I'm talking to those folks about diet and lifestyle. Mm. And I am inspiring many of those to make these big changes. And their post-concussive symptoms resolve. People figure out that, oh my God, Terry, you are onto something. The, the <laughs> VA, the VA, the chief of medicine there comes to me and says, I want to take you out of primary care. Mm and uh, create your own clinic. So then we create the therapeutic lifestyle clinic. Uh, and, you know, before I know it, I'm giving reports to the, the mm. Department of Medicine chair mm. every quarter, mm. the hospital every quarter, because we are so successful. Mm. That's the thing, like for, for me, it's like as if, you know, you certainly have the goals, but as the success, so to speak, happens around you, you're like, well, I couldn't have planned for any of this. I couldn't have planned to be talking to my boss about these things in this way so that the, the institution can go for it. You know what I mean? And so the other thing that's fascinating, so I'd had 27 years of, of really intense suffering from the symptoms from the MS. Yeah. yeah. And yet now, I, I look at my trigeminal neuralgia as this, uh, and my MS as this amazing gift. <laughs> it it uh, uh, has taught me uh, to be think about health and disease in a very different way. I'm far more effective uh, with my patients. I have an amazing research program. Uh, and then personally, my pain is my is this wonderful gift it is a biosensor it tells me very clearly ah. the level of inflammation that's going on in my brain in my spinal cord if my uh pain begins to come back mm. 
if the sensation on my face is not mm. quite right. You know, I sit down uh, and I'm thinking about what was the trigger? Was there um, a food, a diet, a toxin, mm. Uh, mm. stress? What uh, sleep disruption? Did I get a mm. virus? What's going on? What do I think the trigger was? Uh, and then, you know, my wife and I talk about it to try and figure out what was the trigger. And then we also think about what's going on with my self-care routine. Did I you know, let myself get too busy that I did not do my, my self-care routine? Yeah. And so I, I have this very sensitive biosensor of my microglia activity in my brain. I know basically yeah. on a molecular level. Yeah. Is my brain happy or not? <laughs> I don't necessarily need an MRI to know, uh, are there more lesions in my brain or not? Is there more inflammation in my brain or not? Mm. It's because my pain will tell me. Mm. You know, I, I could talk to you forever. So there's two things I will ask you right here, right now. You're a mom. Uh, one of my friends who is a mom who has MS, um, she's like, hey, if you're talking to Tara Walls, I know she says cut up the vegetables before um, and all that <laughs> stuff, but like, I'm exhausted. Like, does she have any other pointers in how to, you know, it, this food, not only food prep, but, you know, you, being this part of the household and keeping your energy? Well, um, a couple of things. One is this is a family intervention. Uh, and, and if you have children, uh, have them get chores to maintain family responsibilities. Mm. Um, so your kids can help you with meal prep. They can help you with shop. They can help you with menu planning. It has to be age appropriate. You're not going to give a two-year-old a butcher knife <laughs> to uh, chop your vegetables. Um, but you can certainly expect your middle school kids to be helping you chopping your vegetables. Okay. Uh, let me tell you, if your youngster is old enough to use a smartphone. By God, they're old enough to be helping you with your chores. Talk about it, okay? <laughs> and we, we know the kids who have chores mm. are academically more successful mm. in uh, middle school, high school, college, financially more successful uh, as adults. Uh, so not giving your kids chores puts them behind I'm like, is that why I'm such a successful uh, older person? Because I did all of the dishes and cleaned the bathroom every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm sure that was a big part of your success. And yes, your kids will complain. Develop oh, yeah. that's appropriate for them. But mm. you're the parent. Give them chores. Have them help you run your household. Have them help you do the chopping. Uh, if you don't have kids, uh, you may uh, want to borrow some neighbor's kids who is looking for <laughs> entrepreneurial opportunities to help you with your meal prep totally. and your domestic chores. Totally. This is not an individual intervention. Mm. This is a family intervention. The more you can do this as a family, the better the whole family will be. Mm. Mm. So it, the last thing I, will, I want to put out here is that your background is appropriate. Because folk like you, <laughs> folk like me, we turn poop into flowers, okay? And it's so important. It is really good fertilizer. Your book, uh, my channel, um, the community that's, um, that's out here and speaking with each other, those are the flowers that is, uh, have the catalyst of the MS poop uh, in the mix. Uh, so as know, soon as, go, go so it, um, severe constipation. Same. Such a big problem Same. Uh, in people with uh, uh, any kind of chronic health problem. Yep. Uh, occasionally it's chronic diarrhea, but much more often it is chronic constipation. It doesn't go nowhere. <laughs> uh, and so I, I talk about this a lot in my book. Hmm. Monitor, monitor your poop. If you're, mm -hmm. if you're constipated, you need more vegetables, more right. raw vegetables, more fermented vegetables, less sugar. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and then you know, we talk about additional strategies beyond that. Uh, and ideally, you want to have a couple snakes a day out of your bottom. Uh, if the snakes are well, escaping, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, the, if the snakes are escaping into the pants, you have to back off. Slow down, slow down. <laughs> so you want to have soft, easily passed poop, 
that you can control comfortably. If they seem to be escaping uh, yeah. a little too soon, then you need less fiber, uh, less fermented vegetables. Look, I say it's like a football. If you can be like, oh, okay, yeah. Then that's what, that's what you want. That's what yeah. you need in your life. <laughs> yeah, you, you want it to be soft and easy. Um, and, and people uh, want to do these uh, fancy uh, poop analyses. We don't need to do that. Just need to, you know, poop and look at it. Look at it. <laughs> <laughs> was it soft and easy or was it messy and in your pants? Yeah, that's it. That, that's all you need to sort. Look, Dr. Terry Walls, you have turned your own poop into flowers. You're helping me to, and countless other people across the globe turn their poop into flowers. Respect and thank you. Yeah, we, we all have to feel comfortable talking about our poop. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, it's a great conversation I have with your kids. How's their poop? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and they'll be sort of embarrassed, uncomfortable, but you know, um, we should talk about that. There's some room for being embarrassed, uncomfortable when you are speaking um, clearly about your health and being um, as transparent as you can uh, be mm -hmm. with the people around you so you can move the needle. Um, that that's really what I've gotten from yeah. um, you and your cookbooks and your book and like just just kind of watching you be out here on the YouTubes and things like that. Like, yeah, no, yeah. this this is what this is about, man. This is the family changing your jam because your jam got you here, having multiple sclerosis. So let's just see what some other jam will get you. Absolutely, absolutely. And and uh, another. As you have your transformation and you begin forward progress, you're like, oh my God, this really does work. And, and then you may find yourself in the next uh, very uncomfortable circumstances. There are people you love that you cherish who don't yet understand. Um, and that you so want them to quit their terrible uh, habits and start eating and, and doing their self-care, but they're not yet ready. Uh, uh, and that can be so painful if it's your uh, your boss, your close friend, your um, uh, uh, siblings. Uh, and, and my advice is uh, none of us ever change based on advice from someone else that I didn't ask for. And uh, it's like telling your adult children to do something. Uh, you know, <laughs> you got to wait for them to ask you. Um, and yeah. you have to wait for your friends to ask you. Be the beacon that attracts them. Be the butterfly uh, attracting the, uh, uh, be the flower to attract the attract butterfly. The yeah, yeah. What, so, you know, on that note, what do you say to people who are like, you know, they're, they're MS patients like us, they're like in a bad way, or they're like you say, it has to come from within. What, do you, do you have any sprinkle you can help to put in someone well, who's like, this doesn't work. What, I'm gonna eat a whole bunch of eggplant and get, and get out of this walker? Nope. Next channel. Uh, so <laughs> I, I can tell people my story, mm. um, which I think is pretty compelling. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we can talk about the stories of other folks who have worked with us uh, in our clinics, um, uh, in my clinical trials, uh, and then I can bite them. Uh, and like, are, are you curious? Uh, uh, and if you want to learn more, uh, in at, at the VA, it was pretty easy. Like. Uh, yeah, and what was striking, um, you know, I got pretty good because uh, uh, in my resident clinics, you know, the residents are seeing th these patients and they'd be like, oh, Dr. Walls, I can't wait for you to talk to this guy. You know, uh, I, I just don't think you can move the needle. And I, I would go have my conversation within five minutes. It would be very clear that the person was, yep, they're not interested or they're like curious and they're willing to do this experiment for a couple of weeks. Now, in the beginning, I could get about half the vets to be curious. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, as I, when I retired from the uh, VA, uh, and that was a, uh, about seven years into my recovery. Well, actually, yeah, seven years into my recovery, I, I retired from the VA so I could just focus on my research uh, and my uh, education for the public. We, I had gotten so effective uh, at China with vets, uh, I'd say easily 90% of my encounters, 
I would be able to get them curious enough to say, you know what, I'll try this for a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. And the vast majority who we go down that path of trying my concepts for just a couple of weeks would then be four weeks and then six weeks. And they're like, um, they appreciate that their energy is improving, their pain is reducing, mm -hmm. and they go down this path. Uh, because I created hope and possibility by my stories uh, and the fact that I, I'm just talking about my experience, what I see in others. So my advice to everyone is, if you're ready, think of this as an experiment. Hmm. You just wanna give it a try. You wanna be a good uh, principal investigator. So you're, yeah. you're gonna do your study well. I'm gonna actually do the intervention. And I may decide I'll give it six months. Mm. That's ideal. Because mm. you may, in a game of inches, you may need a six month horizon. Some folks are like, Indeed. you know, I, I can't see that far, but I, I could see two weeks. Mm. Okay. Mm. So well, I'm having my conversation with the vets. I would encourage a six month horizon. But, you know, if two weeks is all that they can visualize. Yeah. And all we can visualize is a couple inches in the football game. Like, okay. It's just right. like, we're, we're just doing a first down or am I going for the touchdown? That's sometimes it. Sometimes you just have to decide, all I'm going to try and do is get to a first down. And that might be two weeks. That's perfectly fine. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm in the same boat as you are. That's why I'm like, no, this makes sense to me. Um, and that's how... I know that um, my wellness it has been uh, contributed to. I don't know if that sentence works. Never mind. Bottom line, um, these sorts of things are important. And yes, it is a game of inches. And yeah, it is outside of a lot of um, things that are presented to you for you to get better. However, if you want to get better, it's time for you to show up as much as you would for anything else that's not you for yeah. you right now. <laughs> I, I love the football analogy that, um, yeah, you want to win the game. You want to get some touchdowns. Um, and you, you, sometimes it's a game of inches that we're just going to go first down to first down to first down. Uh, and sometimes you get a fucking interception. <laughs> yeah. And now you got to turn around. Like, okay. I'm going to have to start again. <laughs> and you just keep going forward. I think that's also the biggest part. Like some, you you're going toward the um, the the touchdown area, the end zone. I'm um, like, man, you started this metaphor. You you like basketball more than football. Can you continue this? Metaphor? <laughs> anyway, um, you're going that way, but yeah, you turn the ball over. Yeah, you get it intercepted. Something happens that removes you from um, your target, and I think this is where the goodness is. You have to say within yourself, that's okay. You have to say, it's. It, I still believe in what I'm trying to do. So I'm Correct. going to try again and again. And that showing up again when things are horrible and you have thrown the interception or like whatever, that is where um, you will, the wellness lies. And, and the, the, um, the human spirit, you, I, I invite, uh, this is another thing my, my vets taught me, which I, I still mm. love them. Mm. Um, we think about the um, best books we ever read or the most inspiring movies or the most inspiring stories of my uh, 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 youth or my religious experience. It, it's the David and Goliath, mm. the, the person who had tremendous odds against them, who kept at it anyway. Uh, and they you thought they were going to get wiped out time and time again, but they just kept at it. Yeah. And eventually uh, they went. The heroic story is fighting against all odds, facing defeat, 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 but not giving up. It's not that you don't have um, uh, defeats. It's not that you don't have uh, setbacks. It's that you get up every time uh, and you keep working, you keep engaging in the fight of your life. Uh, and so we, we talk a lot now a lot about that in my clinics and my clinical trials uh, when I'm educating the public. 
that we're all David uh, and Goliaths. We are all uh, in the fight uh, of our lives. We're all facing the Death Star. And it's not that we're going to have never have setbacks. It's not that it's uh, we don't know if we're going to win or not. But by God, we are in the fight of our lives. We all have a heroic story. And now that I begin talking about that, helping people understand, you are the hero of your story. And yes, you're going to have terrible setbacks and you'll have stumbles, but you get up every time and you just keep at it. And what you'll discover is you're standing longer each time. That's it. You, you just, the, the gaps between uh, the fumbles or interceptions, they, they get longer and bigger and they're not as bad. And so then you start to keep just turning this thing over. Like, what is that? It, then you begin to experience health and vitality and more joy. Uh, and then other people will start looking up to you like, oh my God, how did you do that? <laughs> and then you'll get to say, you'll get to help your friends and yeah. family discover their heroic journey and the tools that they have that they could use uh, in their journeys. So uh, uh, certainly possible, certainly doable. Uh, it's gonna be tough. It, it, it understand that you're David uh, and the world is Goliath and we just have to keep, keep at it. But like, is there any sort of like last things you would impart with people or like what? So a couple things. I invite them to uh, pick up the Walls uh, Diet Sheet at terrywalls.com forward slash diet. It's a one-page summary of the diet that we teach uh, our patients in our clinical trials and my clinics. It's great for your refrigerator. And then uh, by all means, follow me on Instagram because you'll see what I'm eating every day <clears throat> and you'll get little messages that are so fun. Uh, and then I would also go to my website and uh, sign up for my newsletter because uh, uh, we send out research summaries and research updates on the latest research that I'm reading. Mm -hmm. And you can do that at terrywalls.com forward slash email. Mm -hmm. uh, you pick up the diet sheet at terrywalls.com forward slash diet. And then follow me on Instagram at mm -hmm. Dr. Terry Walls. Look, champion of the people. Um, and again, the idea of you knowing something else is within you and you will not stop no matter what the outside things are until you get there. You are an example of that. Um, you, you're a published example of that <laughs> and just a joy to the community for that specific um, and fleeting uh, to most people reason. Um, respect and peace and thank you for joining us here uh, and we will see you guys on another MS Views now thanks for tuning in take it easy <laughs>